Welcome back, I'm Ryan from Blue Woody Gaming, and today I am finally reviewing Moonlighter. Now, two things before we get into this. Uh, the first off is I received a code to actually review this, and the second one is that this video is super late. Like, I think Moonlighter released a little over two months ago, like right around two months ago. So, I'm extremely late, but there's a reason for that. Um, I did not receive a key for this until a month after this game released. And then, uh, this past month, I've just had so many other things that I've been having to do that I never actually got around to reviewing it. But here we are, I'm finally reviewing Moonlighter, so let's get right into it. Now, I don't want to ramble on about this game forever, so I'm going to separate it up into four different categories. The first one being your character then the shop, then the town, and finally the dungeons. So let's go right through these, starting with your character. As you would guess, you start out really, really weak with only 100 health points, and uh, you can, over time, get better armor to increase your health bar. Um, you can also upgrade the bed in your shop to actually get you a secondary health bar that can get you a hundred points of extra health. And then if you upgrade your bed further, you can get three shields, which will uh, allow you to take three hits and they will just deal no damage. It will take one shield for each of those hits, but you will take no damage whatsoever. You can also upgrade your character's weapons. There's a wide variety of different weapons to choose from. Everything from your basic sword and shield to your two-handed sword. They have spears, uh, bow and arrow, different things like that. And you can equip any two of your weapons. And each of those can be upgraded as well. Now, your armor and your weapons can be upgraded four times, which corresponds to the four different dungeons that you're going to go through. Um, each of them... Each of the different upgrades requires items that you find in each corresponding dungeon. So the first upgrade level requires items from the first dungeon. The second upgrade requires items from the second dungeon, and so on and so forth. And that is pretty much all that you upgrade on your character. You can't upgrade inventory space or anything like that. It's just putting on more armor to get more health, upgrading your bed inside your shop to get the extra health bar on the shields, and then upgrading your weapons to deal more damage to being able to adequately defeat enemies in each of the dungeons. So now let's move on to the shop that you run called the Moonlighter. Now in this shop is where you sell the items that you pick up in the uh, dungeons if you don't use them for upgrading. And that's really how you can fuel your other upgrades because uh, improving the town, improving the Moonlighter and getting upgrades for your armor and weapons all requires gold, which you get from selling different items in your store. And you actually run this somewhat like an actual store. You set the prices for all of the items that you put in there, and you can see how customers react so that you can know if you need to uh, raise the price that you can get more money out of people, or if your item's not going to sell because it's uh, priced too much. Uh, you can also upgrade the Moonlighter over time, which will give you more space to actually like display items and let people buy them. You can also uh, buy other things um, like just statues and things to uh, hang up on the wall, which will give you benefits like um, what I personally have is different items that will make the people give you a tip when uh, they buy something. Uh, you can also buy upgrades like a, a better cash register, which is the innate thing that will get uh, tips and make people pay more for items. Uh, you can also upgrade the bed for your shop, as I previously said. Um, you can upgrade the size, which I already said. You can get more chests in the uh, back room to store more personal items. And you can upgrade a sale box so you can put things there that people will buy on sale. Now, I don't know what it is about it, but just running the Moonlighter and watching all the stuff that you gather get sold and how much money you make and just running the store is actually one of my favorite parts of this game. And I don't know why, it's just a super simple thing that lets you get more gold to continue on through the game, but I don't know, I've just found it... Uh, somewhat calming and something that you don't really get to experience in a lot of other games 
and it's just done so well here. Uh, and now let's move on to the next section of the game, the town. Now, the town starts out with not really much that you can do in it. You can go to the dungeons, which I'll talk about here in a bit, uh, but you have to start earning money so that you can request uh, certain people to come in. There are five specific people that you can request to come to the town. The first one is the armorsmith and the weaponsmith. Uh, he's all wrapped up into one person, so you can upgrade your armor and weapons. Uh, the second person can enchant your weapons, which will just kind of make them do more damage. And she can also craft potions, which is her main duty. Uh, the third person lets you buy items that you would normally find in the dungeon. But say you're looking for a specific item, you can purchase it for a bit more than it's actually worth. And therefore you don't have to go through the dungeon a bunch of times trying to look for a specific item. The fourth person sells the trinkets that I talked about earlier. Uh, these can give different bonuses to your shop, like more customers can be in there at a time. Uh, people will pay you more for the items and different things like that. And then the fifth person is actually a banker. And he's the only upgrade for the town that I really don't recommend getting. Uh, what he does is every in-game Monday, which the game actually runs on a calendar, so you can check when uh, the in-game version of Monday is, uh, you can give him money. And throughout the week, uh, the amount of money that you can take from him increases or decreases. It's basically putting your money into the stock market. The problem is, if you don't take your money out by Sunday, he'll just take it all from you which is really, really kind of stupid. Uh, so I don't really feel like playing that sort of stupid uh, mini game because what happens if you would lose money every day in a week? Uh, then he just takes it all because you don't want to lose it. Uh, so that's just kind of stupid and I don't really see why you would want to waste gold calling the banker to the town. Uh, so yeah, that's all the upgrades that you can put into the town, and let's finally end off by talking about the dungeons. In this game, there are four main dungeons. Uh, each one has a different theme, like the uh, second one that you go to is a forest-based one, and the third one that you go to is desert-based. And then once you beat all four of those, there's a mysterious fifth door that I'm not really going to talk about. Um... Each of these dungeons, like I said, has a different theme, but they do kind of play out the same. Uh, you get to see a whole room when you were first put in, and then it will be procedurally generated uh, from where you go uh, past that. Uh, each room can have up to three, uh, actually four connecting doors, the one that you already came through to enter the room, and then three new doors, um, or up to three new doors. And you just work your way through uh, three floors of each dungeon. And then once you beat the third floor, uh, when you continue forward, you will fight the boss for that dungeon. And once you beat the boss, you can move on to the next dungeon. After beating all four of the main bosses, you get to open up the mysterious fifth door. Now, I was kind of concerned about these being procedurally generated, but uh, after playing for a long time... I realized that this game would get incredibly boring if they weren't procedurally generated or changed every time in some way. So I'm actually really glad for once that a game added procedural generation. And another problem that I have with them is once you beat a dungeon, there's really no reason to go back to it and not just move on to the next one. Like, the only reason that you could really think of is to go back and pick up upgrade equipment to upgrade your weapons or upgrade new weapons. But uh, if you find out what kind of weapons or armor you want early on, then there's no real point to going back to previous dungeons. And I kind of wish that they added a reason for that. Something else that I didn't get to talk about elsewhere in this video is that this game actually takes an interesting uh, turn with the inventory Tetris. 
Uh, normally, you have to play sort of inventory Tetris to be able to fit all the items in your inventory. And uh, they sort of do that a bit weird in this one. Uh, each item that you pick up in the dungeon uh, only requires one slot, but you can pick up items with special properties on it. Uh, these properties can be like, destroy the item below this item when you return to town. Uh, then there's other things like, uh, the item diagonally up to the right of this item will have a, uh, will instantly return back to town. Um, then there's just some other ones. I'm not going to go through all of them right now, but it's just kind of interesting because I've never really seen a game do stuff like that with the inventory and uh, I really kind of like uh, an actual purpose on how you structure your inventory since it is just the uh, each item takes only one slot kind of method. So that was everything that I can currently think to cover about uh, Moonlighter. So let's get into my final thoughts on it and whether or not I think it is worth it for you to buy it. So... Uh, yeah, overall, went into this not really, like, uh, having too many good thoughts about it. Like, I heard the procedural generation, I heard that there was some, uh, slight, um, roguelite elements. I didn't know how extensive they would be when I found out that it was just, uh, the inventory that you had on you and the items that you'd picked up in the dungeons. Wasn't really concerned about that. And uh, I was really kind of interested in seeing how running your shop uh, would be because not many other games let you really do that. And I found that I was having a ton of fun right off the bat with this, even without having an upgraded character. Uh, the curve of difficulty is uh, exactly how I would want it to be. It's not too slow so that you're having to run through dungeon after dungeon just over and over and over again to try to get the items that you need. But it's not so quick that you're going to be running through this game in a couple of hours. So, yeah, overall, for the uh, the standard price of $19.99 or your regional equivalent, I highly recommend Moonlighter if it is even remotely uh, interesting to you. If you want to run a shop, um, definitely if you like uh, semi-dungeon crawlers um, and just... Games like this, this is one of the best, and actually, it's in running to be one of the best games of the year, so check back in December when I have that list out. You might find this game on that list, because that is just how good this game is. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. As always, I'm Ren from Bluewood Gaming, and I will see you guys in the next one.